I'm a very weak human being and these are very heavy. So in my hands here as I conduct this precarious balancing act, I have quite a mix of books, some library books, some fiction, some classics and a couple of arcs. So I think we will start with two mini reviews. So the first one we have is Bad by Chloe Esposito. This one is the sequel to Mad, both of which were sent to me by Penguin uh, for the purpose of this review. And I have to say that this is pretty spectacular and it's hardback, which is beautiful. Probably didn't enjoy it as much as Mad because I think Mad was really innovative but obviously given the nature of a sequel it's not going to be as unique. Alvi is thrilling in this one. I can't say too much about it without giving away spoilers from the first book but basically Alvi is in a very sticky situation and things were getting pretty intense pretty quickly and very dangerous as well. There is a dog in this which is brilliant and the reason I love this and the reason I love the first one is because Alfie is very likeable. It's great. You must read the first one before you read this one, otherwise there'll be massive spoilers. But I definitely recommend it. Then the second and final one that was sent to me is probably the best book that I've read this year. We're over halfway through the year, so that's, that's kind of saying something. This was sent to me by Canongate Books, who are the UK publishers of David Lynch's memoirs, Room to Dream. And there will be various links in the description to his US publishers and his website and things. And I have a very, or had a very odd relationship with David Lynch's films because on the one hand I hated Mulholland Drive, but on the other hand, Eraserhead and The Elephant Man are two of my all-time favourite films. I have since read in this, watched Blue Velvet and loved it, so I, I, I think it's fantastic and I'm very keen to explore his work more as you will see. This is written very innovatively because we have, it, it's um, written uh, with Christine McKenna and it's kind of like half biography, half response. So we have a little a chapter about his life and then Lynch writes something in response to that. So he gets to say things uh, that are in response to his friends and family and it's, it's amazing and it's a really great way to discover Lynch's full life and kind of envelop yourself in his full career in well, I was going to say in a very short space, but it's actually quite a sizable tome, and I love it. The only thing that I will say that was kind of bad uh, is we have these pictures, which are wonderful, but they don't say who they are. You have to go all the way to the back to try and find out who these pictures are, which, you know, I can't be bothered doing back and forth when I'm kind of locked in intensity and trying to read through it. So, unless you're 100% familiar with everybody in his life, which big Lynch fans will be, that's a bit of an arc. But apart from that, it's incredible. Okay, so then we have one that I picked up from a book exchange table, which I love because I always find that you read things you wouldn't normally read. And then they turn out to be phenomenal, like this. This is The Farm by Tom Rob Smith, and it's about this woman who flees her husband to go to her son and... She is convinced that people are up against her and committing crimes and she's got all of this evidence in her bag and it unfolds as an extended conversation. Let's see if I can show you. So like there's not really a, there aren't really chapters in it. But it goes through just little bits of the conversation. It flows really well. I read some reviews after I read this that were not happy with the narrative pacing, but personally I really enjoyed it. This poor book is in such a terrible state. This is Virginia Woolf and Vanessa Bell remembering St Ives. The Stephen family used to go on holiday to Cornwall a lot, certainly before Virginia Woolf's mother passed away. And this beautiful book looks at their life there and kind of all the happy times they had in their childhood. These are completely in no order either. And here we have Ian Forster, Where Angels Fear to Tread. I've read a few of Forster's, but not enough for my own liking. And I thought, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's read another one. I haven't read one in a couple of years. HBC, Helen Bonham Carter is in the film of this. She's also in the film of Howard's End with Emma Thompson. And I thought that'll be a good place to start because I can then rewatch the film after it and see how they compare. So it's not as big as I expected, but I'm keen to see what it's like. One of my missions for this year was to read more horror fiction. I'm a big, big fan of thriller, but I don't read that many horror novels, which is odd because horror films are my favourite film genre. So, at random, I chose this one. This is Touched by Joanna Briscoe. It says, it's erotic and claustrophobic, brilliant, haunting. That's by The Guardian. I really don't know what it's about, so I can't really say much. It's about a family who moved from London to a cottage in an English village. Here we have David Lynch, second edition by Michael Cheon. And, as I said, after reading his Room to Dream, I kind of thought I need to absorb all of the Lynch content that I can find. And there's, ooh, what is that? There's a very random thing in the back of that. 
I had a quick flick through it and it looks like it's quite comprehensive. Obviously it's not going to be as amazing as the memoirs because you're not going to get Lynch's own input. But I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. I brought it to my own attention that I've never read any P.G. Woodhouse, which is pretty shocking. So I thought, let's go for it. My local library didn't have a massive selection, but I found this one, Service with a Smile. And I thought, look at how beautiful that cover design is. Based on that alone, this is the one I'm going to choose for my introduction to Woodhouse. I don't know anything about it. I can't tell you anything about it. But, yeah. Let's see what it's like. Then we have the final two. These were actually gifted to me from a friend who no longer wanted them and I'm so excited about that because I've been desperate to read one of these for quite a long time and we'll leave that one till the end. Beforehand though we have Stephen Fry, The Stars Tennis Balls. I'm madly in love with Stephen Fry. You may know that if you've watched my videos, he's just one of the best people in the world. This one I've read about a third and it's, it's so good. It's very Stephen Fry. Uh, the vocabulary is incredible, the writing style is gorgeous and I love him. And similarly, we then have Stephen Fry and Moab is my wash pot. I've read the Fry Chronicles, I've read his other memoir, the name of which I can't remember. I've also read Mythos and I've read The Hippopotamus. But I hadn't read his first autobiography and I've been desperate to and I just never got around to it and my friend said, here, I don't want it, you can have it. So I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm kind of halfway through it. And, and there's young Stephen Fry, there are some amazing pictures in it and I love it. I'm not going to pick them up again because I have a very weak wrist. But they're amazing, one of the most exciting batches of books that I've hauled this year. Let me know if you've read any and of course let me know if any suggestions, particularly horror, as I am looking for some good horrors to read. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.